Hello, Cherries fans. Hope you're doing all right this Thursday night. On Saturday, AFC Bournemouth travel to play Preston North End, a team that beat us 3-2 at the Vitality Stadium earlier in the season. It's going to be a tricky one, but can we win another match? Another consecutive win? It would be really nice and it would put a smile on the faces of Cherries fans, just like one particular fan had a smile put on his face only today. Daniel is a young cherry from Florida and he's a familiar face on Back of the Net and he's with us now. Daniel, how are you? Good. Very happy about today. Hope so, everyone here is good. Yeah, so you're very happy about today and we obviously want to find out why that is. Now, obviously, you're in Florida and you've got a Bournemouth shirt on. You've been you've been supporting Bournemouth for a number of seasons. How how did you get into supporting us in the first place, mate? So I went to go see my dad because he lives in um, Bournemouth, and I used to live there a long time ago. But then I came to the United States, so I went there to go visit him. And it was the summertime, so there was still Bournemouth games going on. So I went to my first ever Bournemouth game. It was um, Bournemouth versus Natalie. Yeah. And at that time, Natalie was a very good team. And drawing against Natalie is not very easy. So I was I was very happy. And by the second game I went to, I knew that was the team. Well, it's my team. Brilliant. So what did you make of the fans, of the atmosphere at the Vitality Stadium? Did you enjoy it? Well, I, I liked it because before the game started, we went to my uncle's restaurant. And everyone were like, like, like teasing about how Bournemouth were going to lose now that he's so good. And the funny thing is when we drew, all of their faces were like like really good. So I think <laughs> that was one of the reasons I, I actually really liked Bournemouth because Bournemouth is basically unpredictable. And that's what I really like about Bournemouth. And the fans are amazing. They're like very nice fans. And they're, they're always going to back another cherry. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's really nice to hear. So obviously, when we were in the Premier League, you were able to watch the matches really easily because in over in the states is it NBCSN that has every single match. So you know, for each and every uh, match week, thirty eight in the Premier League, you could watch Bournemouth live every single time, couldn't you? Well, yeah, and I it was like much more better when we were in the Premier League because I had to, I have in my TV I have like this channel that plays La Liga Premier League and all the other main league leagues so i was um very excited that i could still watch it when i'm in the united states but nowadays it's i have to go afcb tv but i i still very like afcb tv but it was much yeah. different and it's a lot better when chris and willow are commentating isn't it yes um i am like a fan that i don't know i get mad by any any other fans who say that like they're better so hearing like the qpr radio thingy i was not the biggest fan and yesterday's game or the day after yeah i was not really happy because i was in i was watching it and they were only talking about bristol city like come on yeah no, that's right. And I think it's because of the whole coronavirus thing at the moment. The commentators aren't allowed to travel. So what we got was BBC Radio Bristol, so their feed. And before that, for the Queen's Park Rangers game, we had their in-house commentators. And it, yeah, they just weren't as good. So yeah, we've been able to watch the matches on AFCB TV Live. What have you thought of this season so far for Bournemouth, Daniel? Because we started off pretty good. And then we had a number of losses in a row. Jason Tyndall lost his job. And Woodgate's picked it up now, and he seems to be doing all right, doesn't he? So it's like a weird relationship because I don't really want to be in the championship because these teams are really hard to beat. But I'm feeling it's just I don't know how to feel about this because it's like very hard to feel about. But ever since we lost, I was very disappointed. I was like, we're we can do better. So. I, I always had high hopes, but in my heart, I wanted to be honest. So then I didn't say that we were going to win. So, yeah. And then when Jason Tindall got sacked, I I think it was a good idea. But I also, he had so many memories for yeah. when I was a Boma fan. He was always there celebrating when we scored a goal. So, like, he had, uh, like, a lot of memories for me. So it was kind of sad to see him go. 
Yeah, it is. And many Bournemouth fans are going to be returning to the stadium to see a completely different bench. We're, we're used to seeing Eddie and JT on that bench. I know that some of them went back in those two games and managed to see Wickham and, H- and Huddersfield both wins. They saw JT on the bench. He's not even going to be there now. So it is going to be completely different. So talking about coronavirus and all that kind of stuff, obviously I'm aware of what's happening in the UK. So what's happening with you? Are you going to school at the moment or are you learning from home? What's happening? So right now I I do online school. So what I do is I wake up like at seven o'clock so I can log in. I'll join my classes and when the teacher would be looking at me and then I just log into my online class and I'll just do all my work. And I, I love online school because because we're in the championship, there's games on the weeks, so I can actually watch them. And that's why I really like online school, because it's a chance for me to watch Bournemouth games while I'm in class, because I have class at that time. Brilliant. So during lockdown, the club have obviously been doing all these phone calls to fans, WhatsApp, FaceTime. And um, your phone rang today, didn't it? You had, um, you had a WhatsApp video call. Tell us what on earth happened, mate, because the fans want to know what happened and who it was. So I was like, I was, I just finished school. It was like, like, like one minute after I finished school, my dad tech calls me like five times. He goes, answer the phone, answer the phone. So I answered it. He just, he, he went straight away. Answer my uncle. He's about to call me. Then he hanged up. I waited like five more minutes. My uncle called me. And while my uncle was walking, he said, someone wants to talk to me. And it was something very different. Very different. So, go on. Who was it? Jefferson Lerma. So, Jefferson Lerma is on WhatsApp video call to little Daniel from Florida. And he's talking to you over WhatsApp video. That is incredible. So, firstly, what I want to know is, is his English any good? So, so when I first talked to him, he was talking English, but, like, not a lot because I know how to speak Spanish or for the half of the time I spe- speak Spanish to him. So oh. when he first speaks English, you could tell he's getting better because he was saying like words, I remember he was saying some words like, some words like, how are you? Very good, like no stuttering. Yeah. He was saying like, um, lovely to see you, very good. I, I don't know, I feel like his English is very good the only thing I feel like his English is good, but some words he just stutters on it. But his English is actually pretty good, in my opinion. Ah, oh, that's good because a lot of people were saying that when he came to the club, it was about the same time as Diego Rico. His English wasn't as good as Diego's, and Diego picked it up really quickly. But did you speak to Jefferson Lerma in Spanish as well? Yeah. So I I decided to speak Spanish with him because I didn't know he spoke speak really good English well not that good but like English so I decided to speak Spanish with him just in case if he didn't know all the words I was saying so I could actually talk to him that is amazing so god um how long did the phone call last what did you talk about I'm 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 well intrigued so I I only I didn't talk to him for that long because he was in the restaurant talking with his I think his wife and his daughter so what I got to say, first he asked me how it's like in uh, Florida, and then he was talking about how he played for Colombia in here in the United States, and he was talking about like his success in Florida, and then um, he was like talking about how, basically how he started, like chose Borma for the team, and yeah, it was... That's amazing. That's amazing. And he had his normal smiley face, I presume, because I don't know about you, Daniel. I've never seen a footballer smile so much. So I presume he was being exactly the same. In fact, we'll we'll post a screenshot so people can see. So there you can see Daniel on a WhatsApp video to Jefferson Lerma. And yeah, as ever, he he looks really happy. And you know, what kind of person is he? You know, does he come across as very friendly and easy to talk to? So there was um, the one of the staffs of the restaurant was there with Jefferson Lerner for like assistance. So like, so some of it, he, I don't know, he was not the best at using the phone, 
Some of the times he would pause it. Some of the times he would, like, press the wrong button. So he wasn't the best at the phone. But then, like, and then it was, like, this one time one of the waiters came and started, like, doing banter about, like, saying how how Arsenal's way better than Bournemouth. And Jefferson Lumber just started laughing. It was amazing. <laughs> it was just, like, it was kind of weird also because it was, like, Jefferson Lumber is, like, um... Because we remember the Watford game, he was like mm. going weird, but he's actually a very, very nice person. Mm. Did you, when he called, because you know, obviously when you speak to us a lot on Back of the Net, people that you know and chat to every week, you know, you chat absolutely fine and you can ask questions. Uh, did you get a bit starstruck? So when it, when it first happened and my uncle was telling me it's him, I was like, is it the real one or is it just like a like a guy named Jefferson Lerner? <laughs> yeah. And then he told me it was the real one. For like the first like sixty seconds I had like this like big smile on my face. It was like up to here. Cause I was really happy because Jefferson Lerner is one of the first my first ever bonus players that I actually ever got to talk to. So it was actually amazing. And then when he started talking to me in Spanish, uh I kind of controlled the smile but yeah. it was i don't know how to explain it but like imagine imagine you just find like a thousand dollars on the street mm. and you just pick it up and it's yours that's how i felt amazing amazing when i spoke to morgan um he was so chuffed that he got that phone call from steve cook and you know for you to get a call from jefferson lerma i mean that that must have made your day have you had any when you went to Dean Court the first time, did you manage to get any pictures with players or anything like that? No. Um, the only thing close that I ever got for, like, a player was, um, but it was when I was in America, I for, like, a birthday gift, Charlie Daniels, I got a signed jersey from Charlie Daniels. That's the only closest thing I got to, like, to, to speak to a player, but now I have Jefferson Lerner, but that was one of the closest Amazing. things. And... So if you can see in the videos, every time we were in the Premier League, they come off the bus and they will sign stuff. I never knew how you could do that. My, my, my dad didn't know. My brother didn't know. So we were just watching the game. And when the game ended, we just left. And my, my dad, I already said how my dad lives in Bournemouth. My dad doesn't know the players as well. And if I was there, I would most likely do this to him. Because sometimes he sees players, but he doesn't know their name or doesn't even know. One time he met Nathan Ake in the gas station. And it was one of the weirdest stories when he told me when he realized it was Nathan Ake when he left. He was like, I went to the gas station and then there was this, there was this guy who was just staring at me. And then I stared back to him and then he was smiling at me. And then he, my, I just left. And then, then I realized, and then... He, t he told me he realized it was Nathan Ake. And, and I just was Amazing. disappointed that he didn't do anything about it. But, yeah. Absolutely superb. Well, one thing you can say, I mean, you, you might not have had a selfie with a player, but you've obviously got that screenshot, that photo that we showed earlier, and you're on screen with Jefferson Irma, who is Bournemouth's most expensive signing, our record signing. So you've got a picture with him on your phone so treasure that moment daniel that's amazing and you know the club are doing brilliant aren't they during lockdown with all these things people getting phone calls and it's a good way for players and staff to keep connected with the fans isn't it yeah it was uh very nice and so like i said i didn't really get to talk to him that much so because my uncle knows him personally because he always goes to the restaurant i'm going to i guess talk to him again soon whenever he comes back and I didn't really get to talk about like his experience at Bournemouth that much and how he how he feels in the championship but I already have a feeling what I'm going to say next time it's going to be more about Bournemouth and one of the things I'm going to say is I might get a video of him saying something like I don't know maybe like go subscribe to back of the net and um <laughs> I, I might do that, and then I would, I would, I would do that for um, what's um, Cherry's Red Army because I know they're trying to grow their channel, and that would yeah. help them a lot. So next time I, I get to see them, I'll ask for that, that like a video. 
that'd be super. Kurt would love that as well. Daniel, yeah. unbelievable. Your day, your week has been made. Uh, hopefully, Bournemouth just maybe get that win against Preston on Saturday. What's your prediction for that match? Um. So my, I. I'm pretty sure on Super 6, I put 2 on Bournemouth because I see Preston scoring. Preston is a good team, but I feel like we're back. So I think we're going to at least score 2. They might score 3, but I feel like we, we're good with 2 for now. And when we're scoring 2 and then we're going to go up, go go up. Amazing. Amazing. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. And spreading the good news and uh, yeah hopefully that result happens on Saturday. Daniel thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yeah it should be a very good game of the weekend. Remember we've got our free for all straight after it and uh, also make sure you subscribe for more videos up the cherries.